Right. The lighting circuit. Last explanation. From the information that I gave you, which was lighting circuit to be installed, yeah? 20 lights, each rated at 14 watts each. The first thing you need to do is to find the ID. The amount of lights, which was 20. That 20 times the wattage, which was 14. That's the first step, okay? That should give you 280 watts total, yes? Using Ohm's law then, you need to then, you're looking for I, this one. I represents what? Current. Current. So therefore, when you do that equation, the I should equals 1.2 amps. Because you've got 280, which is the wattage, the power. Yeah? The P then goes over V, gives you I. Yes? The P in this scenario is 280 watts. Are you following me? Yeah. 280 divided by 230. Yeah? That's how we end up with 1.2 amps. Okay? The IN represents the protective device. The fuse. Yeah? The protective device. We then selected, I then gave you BSEN 6009-1, which is a RCBO. Okay? It couldn't have just been a circuit breaker because the regulation, the present one, which is the 18th regulation, it says that domestic lighting circuit has to be protected by additional protection. What is additional protection again? 30 milliamp. 30 milliamp. 100 don't give you additional. Okay? 300 don't give you additional. That's if you're going for fires. Yeah? Remember, construction site, 500. Right. So then we selected the IN, the fuse. As I said, VSEN 6009-1. 6 amps. Okay? RCBO. Yes? Right. So we then taken care of the IN, the IB. We've got the IT, which is the tabulated value. Okay? The cable size. For a lighting circuit, you use 1.5. Yeah? The CPC will be 1 mil. Okay? PVC, PVC, that's the cable, the cable, okay? To do the VD, which stands for volt drop, we then, we then go to volt drop, yes? The formula for the volt drop, millivolt amps per meter, okay? Times the design current, times the length over 1,000 because it's millivolt amps. That's why you have to then divide it by 1,000. Yes? Okay. The ID, so that one there, the 29, you then need to go into your on-site guide to select what the MVAM is. Okay? If you look, you will see it says 29. The 29 Yeah. The 29 times the IB, which was 1.2. Yeah? The length, which was 20 meters. Yeah. When you do that, it gives you 0 0.7 volts. Okay? Yeah. Yes? Yeah. At the same time, how do you know that that 0 0.7 volts is acceptable? Because it's a lighting circuit, and lighting circuit, you allow how many percent? Three. Three. Power, five. Lighting, three. Yes? So when you do 3% of 230, does it come to 6.9? Ibrahim, when you do 3% of 230, does it come to 6.9? So, six, so if you do 3%, because it's a lighting circuit and you allow 3%, it comes to volt drop. So 3% of the voltage will give you 
6.9 volts. So that's how you know 0 0.7 volts is acceptable. The next one I gave you was the ZS. To work out the ZS. I gave you the value for ZE, which was 0.4 ohms. Okay? To calculate the value for ZE, remember ZS says ZS equals ZE plus R1 plus R2. That's for ZS. ZS equals ZE plus R1 plus R2. Yeah. So by me giving you this formula for ZE, which is 0 0.4, all you had to do was do this formula now. You're going to use the R1 plus R2 for that 1.5 cable, which gives you 24.2. Are you following me? Yeah. From the 24.2, you use the length of the rug, which was 20 meters. Yes? Because the CPC is incorporated in the cable, you have to put a multiplier. And that multiplier is 1.2. Sir, the formula is plus the multiplier. The formula to find ZS is ZS equals ZE plus R1 plus R2. To use this formula to find out what you need to add the ZS to add to the ZE. Okay? When you do this formula, when you add them, you get your official ZS. That's why you have to times this one one time. Yes? You times it. So the R1 plus R2, which is 24.2, times the length of run, which is 20, times 1.2, the multiplier, over 1,000. Okay? And that's how you get this. The prospective fault current, which is IF or PFC, equals... Volts over impedance. So you need to write IF, IF equals volts divided by impedance. So you can have IF equal V over Z. And that gives us yeah, 230. IF equals V over Z. Pardon me? Yeah, write, write, write the letters though, write the formula. And whatever the scenario is, you put the numbers into that. But you get the formula. IF equals, yes? Right. Once you've got that, you then need to do the equabatical equation. S equals IF squared times T, open bracket, close bracket, divided by K, which is 115. And once we did that, we end up with 0 0.632. And what's that measured in? What's the 0 0.63 measured in? Thank you. Meter, millimeter square. Yeah. And that is telling you what size the CPC that we've selected in the cable. Yeah. One mil. Yeah. And this is what will take care of the fault current. Yeah, so, so does the one mil comply? Yeah, of course. Every All day, day, every day. Going back to the ZS value, which we got 1 ohm, yes? In actual term, 1 milli ohm, yes? 1 mega ohm, not milli, 1 mega ohm, okay? Does that comply? The 1 mega ohm? Yes or no? Does the 1 mega ohm comply? After the break, we'll go through that, and I'll tell you why it does comply. Because when it comes to inspecting and testing, that's the least value you're allowed to accept, one leg over. Okay? So, that is designing the circuit and steps you have to take to make sure that everything complies with the regulation. Okay? Thank you.